Nobody's going to get these pictures again. They're all dead. People know me as a photographer, but I think I like the term reporter. National Geographic, Time, Newsweek, Cosmopolitan. It's a very common career path for people like me. It was until 10 years ago anyway, when things crashed somewhat. <laughs> it's hard to pick real highlights. I would have to say, we're talking about it now with the books that Trish and I did. I think it was probably the best photographic partnership of that type that we've seen in Australia. The book was released in 1990 and it still evokes the most extraordinary memories for me. The story is just unbelievable. You could just tell that this was the end of an era. I mean, we knew soon after it was an impossible thing to ever repeat. I said to Trish, you know, we've actually recorded this incredible slice of history. I think the Goldfield stories are some of the most enticing of them all. I was probably as moved by the people as I was with the urgency to record it. The thing that surprises me, I mean, we did this work 25, 30 years ago now. Nobody's gone out and done it again. I mean, the old boys, most of them have gone. I mean, we've literally travelled back in time. It really is a rolling on of what we were doing 25 years ago. It's a new chapter, though. Yeah, definitely. Well, I guess the aim of the whole thing, in a way, is for us to find that there are prospectors out there like we found 30 years ago. Let's face it, we're always in search of characters. I just love taking photographs of people. I think there's nothing more precious than having a relationship with a person where you can actually take their photograph. Nice. There's something special about that person. Hector Pelham, the mayor of Broad Arrow, who used to sleep on the pool table if he couldn't get home, which was actually just across the road. Trish, I think, asked him... Any other prospectors like you round? And he said, nah. Ah, dropping off like flies. I now look back on a lot of the work and then suddenly you begin to realise how important the work is. In that sense, it's recording a lifestyle, the history of part of the country. If these things weren't recorded, I mean, nobody would have any idea. You know, they're ghost towns. I think there's still a lot out there to be done. But it's now become a treadmill of evolving technology. It's built in obsolescence. It's very difficult because of this collapse in the industry. Yeah, things have changed remarkably, but that's how it goes, I suppose. We were searching, you know, we were always driven and always looking for the next person, and it was just so exciting. Some of the directions were just so obscure. Often they'd be on the back of a bar mat or something like that. When they found out what we were doing, oh, God, all right, better go out to old so-and-so. You can't miss him. My name's Mouse. A prospect. Well, that's my home. I live in the bus. I'm in there all year round and Dad's in here. He's got the shed. Once my wife died and that, when it was like, I want to go back to the bush. And then I come up here and got into prospecting. So I hang around here with old mate. Hey. Look at that, it's beautiful. Would have been good up here 20, 30 years ago. The turning point, I think, came meeting these people in the bush. I mean, these are really great characters. But I think a lot of younger people out there are now looking for a change in lifestyle. Can't blame them either. So there's a whole new generation of prospectors out there and the stories are still out there.